Cool. Well, it's cool to see some people popping in. Um, today is our season two demo day. And this is my always my favorite day. We haven't done one of these for a while. And maybe not since even last year. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but hopefully we can start doing these once a season at least. Uh, definitely my favorite part of the season. Um, you know, it's kind of, there's looking at the projects that are going to be doing demos today. Uh, we have a bunch of them, um, really diverse kind of things across the DAO space using DAO house tools, um, doing all new experiments and, um, just really cool to see this kind of stuff. And it's exciting. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's kind of like we're archaeologists and we have this huge dig site and we're pulling up these different pieces and we know we're building a puzzle, but we got to get all the pieces first and each piece we find, we have to experiment with it and polish it and figure out how they go together. Um, and, but once we do that, you know, we start putting together new use cases, new products, new tools. Um, but there has to be this kind of round of discovery first. Today, there's a lot of awesome, diverse examples um, about how these pieces can be put together and what we're hopefully enabling. Um, some of the experiments by these teams, you know, they're, these people sometimes are underpaid, sometimes not paid, and still trying to build out and discover this stuff for an idea of a future that, um, you know, where we can build in the open in new ways where the users own it. And ultimately, we can change the way organizations work. Um, DAOs, that's why we're here, right? So, yeah, we have a lot to cover. I'm not going to blab on for, for too long. Um, and we can just hop right into some, some demos. Um, we don't have a lot of time, and there is one, two, three, four, six or seven different teams demoing. And there was, there was other people, too, that uh, have done some cool stuff. Um, and if we do have time at the end and anyone wants to show something, we can fit those in, or we can do it on another day. Um, so, yeah, we'll keep the demo short, you know, tell the story, casual maybe what the, the kind of real world use cases are for this kind of stuff, how they fit together with other things, um, any lessons learned, and uh, we can just get started. So, uh, Star Garden, Seneschal. Cool. Yes, what's um, up guys? What's up? Um, yeah, so I, I guess I'll just jump into the demo here. So, um, myself and Simono have built this uh hats protocol enabled Malik Dow shaman, um, designed to mm -hmm. like significantly increase agency for people mm -hmm. in DAOs that just want to get shit done. Excuse my language. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> We've identified like a lot of problems with DAOs within DAO House mm -hmm. and the DAO operator ecosystem. And, you know, one of those things is like directly solved for by HATS protocol, which is, you know, individuals need to be delegated um, some mm -hmm. degree of authority and agency within DAOs to make them good. Um, so that's exactly what the Seneschal allows. Um, it's part of this Kazoku family of uh, Hats Protocol, Moloch Dao Shamans. It's the first one. So hopefully we can get uh, some other people to work on these because they're going to be tools that just allow Dao's to kick a lot more ass uh, than they have in the past. So, And the core concept behind these is um, a commitment between some person and the DAO itself. Um, and these commitments are contain a lot of data so uh, that they can be 
quite flexible um, and do lots of different things. Um, but at a high level, the Seneschal just allows um, it allows the DAO to delegate authority to two different hat wares. It's important that they're two different people because between the two, the two of the people, they have a lot of power in the DAO. Or even better, you know, you could use a hat signer gate so that uh, the two authorities are even like further decentralized and have more checks and balances on powers. So the way this works is um, a participant creates a proposal for some form of value creation. It could be a project, could be an app, whatever. They would then bring it to a hat wearer in the DAO called a sponsor and say, hey, look, uh, this is something I want to do, and it's going to add value to the DAO. And sponsors have the authority to sponsor that proposal. So once it's sponsored, um, it, it becomes a commitment uh, between the person who created the proposal and the DAO itself. And I'll show you kind of what that looks like. So <clears throat> we've also designed Seneschal to have um, a chat GPT large language model integration and to be integrated with Arweave. So someone would write up their proposal, present it to sponsors. Sponsors would say, okay, like that looks good. Publish it to Mirror. So once it's up here on Mirror, it is um, this piece of data is indestructible from here on out. It's um, you know it's stored on the Arweave blockchain and it can be uh, forever retrieved. So that's what we've actually done with the front end um, scope and specifications for this project. So once it's on Mirror, anyone wearing the sponsor hat can come in here and say, okay, you know we're going to give. 10,000 loot tokens. The rewards can actually be shares or loot in the DAO, or they can be an ERC-20 token, but we only have the loot in the front end because that's all we're going to be using it for um, at Silverdoor, where, where we built this. So you'll put in the recipient. You'll put in the title. Of course, you have to have an image because we like to make these things kind of look like an NFT in the front end a deadline, which is the date by which it has to be completed, and then an expiration, which is like the date where it, uh, if you haven't claimed it by this date, then it expires. But this is where it gets interesting. So we're directly linking the Arweave content digest to this on-chain action. So when you put in your, oh, whoops, that's not a mirror link. When you put in your mirror link, you're going to get an automatically generated summary from ChatGPT. Mm, that one looks weird. It broke. So you can regenerate it if you don't like the summary, but this looks great. I mean, that's exactly what this proposal is. So we'll go ahead and sponsor it. At this point, it uh, loads, it stores the metadata for this proposal up on IPFS. So you have this sort of deeply connected, oh, that's interesting. You have this sort of deeply connected um, set of, of links between, you know, the IPFS metadata, Wow. Um, last time I tried to demonstrate this, we had a Gnosis RPC outage. This time I'm getting some weird error. So I, I'm literally so frustrated with this because we tested it for, like we've tested this thing for three weeks and never <laughs> run into... This is how it really always goes. But, it, but it's awesome because, uh, I mean, we all get probably the general idea here and gnosis having an rpc outage is not uncommon um this is badass is there anything like uh just in the 
uh, to try to keep things moving, get everyone in. Is there anything really you want to highlight here on, uh, you know, how you think the next steps of this could go or any big issues you hit or things like that? Um, yeah, so there's a few kind of steps here. Once a proposal is sponsored, it will slide over to the, the verify tab. So it becomes this, you know, tokenized commitment. Uh, it's not really tokenized, but it, it appears tokenized and that's good yeah. enough, right? <laughs> so um, once it's hanging out here, the uh, people with the witness hat are the ones like responsible for uh, verifying that this piece of work, like this project was completed. Once it's been completed, they can, uh, you know, verify the, oh, you know what? No, we're on Gnosis. Uh, they can verify that it's been completed and mark it for uh, mark it like valid so that it can then be claimed by the recipient. Um, and that's just basically the gist of how it works. It uh, is not working right now, which is, uh, wow, frustrating because this has worked I don't know how many times. <laughs> um it could be Moloch. Moloch in the uh in the phone lines. But <laughs> this is incredible, point. man. It's actually a really cool example of how these shamans and hats and things can work together. And we're gonna see some more cool shaman hat stuff mm -hmm. with Spencer. And I know you've been doing a lot of uh just other experiments with DAOs and hats. So post some links uh and um, any other information you want in the chat so that uh, people can follow up and learn more and, and check out some more demos. Yeah. Um, who next? Yeah. Bitbeckers. Next with uh, the cookie jar. And the whole story around cookie jars is actually kind of cool. Um, kind of in the, the deepest, darkest part of the bear when it first started and we were all... Um, you know, trying to figure out ways to continue. We put out a, a kind of like a request from all of our communities for one ETH or two ETH, and they all helped sponsor this project. We went and made it a little too ambitious, uh, an, an initial easy idea, but um, Bitbeckers was able to pull it all together and really has a working demo now. Um, let's maybe just call it a demo Go for it, man. and then we'll see if it works. Um, I'm just going to try and wing this. I know we're a little short on time, so I'm also going to try and speed run this on wings. So the cookie jar, basically the idea is that we in organizations have a lot of like overhead in getting forms and proposals and requests and getting them all done. While some work is basically on the scale of time that you need to uh, that you need to put in there and the time that you need to put in there to get the funds out are disproportional. So the idea is that you can set up a community slush fund where you have 10, uh, let's say you have 100 die in there and every community member can just claim like one or 10 dies every day and they just uh, give a reason. Uh, this is something that we started in the winter brigade, brigade with Raid Guild. So I think it's almost like eight months ago that we really started this. Um, but then it got a kickstart because Deacon was kind enough to pull us into the public house ecosystem and even uh, give a little grant. And he also, well, we get that with shout outs. So maybe quickly, what it does it actually what does it actually do? Is that we have a whole set of contracts because we like blowing up scope, which has like a core cookie functionality, and it can be either six five five one or it can be a safe module. Then we have different types of allow lists that are ERC20, 721, fix it live, 721, oh, there it is again, or allow list, or being a DAO member, um, or, well, we can think of other things. I think, for instance, hats can be very interesting, so people can have, like, uh, if you have the right hat, you can pull from there. 
then we rolled out a bunch of implementations and then there, there are two summoning flows and one is from the NFT contract and one is from the safe. And they all give you one cookie jar instance. So we're basically inheriting this shit out of the whole architecture, which was a fun exercise, but also very confusing if you're going to work with JSON strings and Solidity. Um, so then that was the architecture. Then what well, basically what we did is we, uh, we built this app that's built using the DAOHAS SDK that allows you to create a new jar, being an, M being an NFT, where you can say this is for the demo, and then -lo 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 -lo. we can give it a crumble. We can say we want it to deplete every five seconds or to refresh the amount every five seconds. And you can claim this amount of cookies. And then because I am me, it is me, myself, and I. And then we sign the transaction and the jar gets minted. At least that's what we hope. Then when you look at the jars, um, the data that we submitted is actually based is just adjacent and is being parsed here. Uh, is being parsed again over here. Um, I think I was smart enough to already fund one. Yes, I was, but it doesn't have balance. Oh, haha, it does. And then I can make a new claim that says, uh, "Give me the cookies." Please work. Oh God, yes. I think it does. Well, we figured out because what we expect is that here the cookie arises. So basically this works. Uh, this is the DAO house app. The second app that we have is built by Santiago. Massive shout out. He, he just kept working on this every time that we said, oh, we made a change. He said, sure, I'll test it out. Um, but this allows us to have a safe, and the safe can be a DAO. Uh, and, but if it's already a DAO, and this is the bakery DAO, I can create a new module that says I want it to be a Baal cookie jar. I can give it a name, I give it get all the parameters, and it basically you recognize the data pattern. There will be a safe module added to our DAO that allows you to draw from a specific safe. So um, these are the apps. And they work and they're really cool. One thing that I also lost many, many hours in is that we actually tried to build this whole app without using the graph, um, which means what are you going to do with indexing all the data? And the, the Gitcoin group published chainsaws at one point, uh, and I tried to use that. But then when the world moved to Veeam, everything broke. And so broke our indexer. And this is why I kind of left it out of, uh, I kind of left this product on the shelf. Then Deacon said, hey, are we going to stop? I said, no, I'm going to try something else. So what I actually did in this whole application is that I built a client-side indexer that stores everything in IndexedDB. So mm -hmm. you basically give it the factory address. It monitors the factories. It adds all the instances to the index database. And then when you add an instance to the database, it adds the events that it wants to monitor for the reactions or the up or down votes. So what you can do here is I can actually give an upvote. Please give a transaction. Yes. And at one point, what we are expecting, and maybe I need to refresh, this updute will up. So what? It, so yes, Sam, this does pull on new blocks. It's using the default RPCs, but the small caveat is it's using default RPC of my wallet and not of the SDK, but we have a thread on there uh, on this somewhere else. So, but basically this whole app is ready to just pu be pushed on IPFS and you can just load the client side and everything should work. The biggest caveat is, is your RPC friendly? What are the learnings for me? Indexing awesome. is a pain in the... Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna wrap up really soon. Indexing is a pain in the ass because yep. I, I think I tried th three different implementations. 6551s are dope, uh, but it's also really dope what you can do with safe modules and deadlines. I'm going to call them lifelines now because apparently I deliver when I have a deadline. So that's really cool. Uh, shout out to Deacon and Santiago and the people that funded our developments, which are Dow House, Public Nouns, Raid Guild, and the uh, Medicartel. Thank you for this. Uh, awesome. For your attention.
It works. Nice. That's super cool. You know that there's a there's like streaming funds, and then there's more of this like slush fund. Um, and I think there's different use cases for both of them. I really like the use case uh, in this case because of um, daily limits or weekly limits or however you wanted to set it because it's more explicit and it's not just like streaming funds off until uh, whatever. You, you know exactly why funds are taken with those reasons. Um, cool, thanks for the link. And we're gonna have to write a little blog post about this one too because it is pretty fun but you can use probably use this pretty soon from the safe app or as a the uh, six five five ones so let's see who next spencer another awesome uh, hats use case this one's probably a little more technical but we're gonna see a see the demo not technical but maybe not as visual <laughs> i think we can make a visual and that's mostly thanks to to Dow House itself. Um, but let me let me share my screen. Awesome. Uh, what's the best way to do this? Probably my whole screen because of the way Discord likes to do things. All right, let me know if you guys can see this screen that says Hats Ball Shamans. Yes, sir. Excellent. Uh, well, before I start, I just want to say how like uh, much fun it is for me to like come and talk about hat stuff with with Dow House people. Um, hats like started at the like the very beginning of Hats was like trying to figure out how to make Dow House DAOs better, and it's like such a thrill to see like some of that early hopes come. Like I think true to some degree or at least starting to be true and it's amazing to see like star garden building awesome stuff with with hats and uh and dow house and i'm just really excited about those like both hats and dow house working together to create really really cool things so uh, thanks for having me back here and it, it's always a, a, a thrill to to come back and hang out um but today i want to talk about uh the hats onboarding shaman which is a shaman that is generally pretty good for creating or turning um, DAO house DAOs into sub DAOs. And I actually wrote this, built this shaman explicitly for the Hats Proto DAO, which just launched the other day or, or week, um, which is a sub DAO inside of our broader uh, broader organization. You can check that out, the, art, the structure of that here, if you'd like. Um, and I can send you guys the link if you want to check that out. Um, but I'm mostly going to be focusing on this demo version. So I'm going to start with hats, and then I'll get into how uh, the shaman works, and uh, then we'll we'll do a brief demo. Um, so imagine that this top hat here represents like the super DAO, like the main DAO, and then there is a sub DAO underneath it that it wants to create. Um, and it's going to manage the membership of that uh, of that sub DAO with hats. So the the people that ha that are wearing the proto DAO member hat basically can become members in, or in other words, receive shares in the proto DAO itself. Um, so that proto DAO itself <laughs> this is a funny hat name that I kind of randomly came up with is at this address here, and that's what I'll show you in DAO House first in a second. But then I've gone ahead and minted this proto DAO or this like sub DAO member hat uh, to a bunch of you who dropped your ENS in, in the chat. So all of you now have this hat, which means that you can onboard into the this you know test proto DAO. I'm using the same same contracts that I use to test the the proto DAO deployment, so that's why it's called proto DAO. But this is basically the uh, a Moloch DAO that can be used as a sub DAO. Um, that DAO is over here. You'll see that that it this DAO has two members, or technically one member. This is my test address, and this is obviously my main ENS address. Uh, my test address joined this, onboarded into this proto DAO, into this sub DAO, um, not by receiving shares directly from the DAO, but by claiming them from the shaman. Um, so the way the shaman works 
is that it takes advantage of the shaman's ability to uh, mint and burn both shares and loot to you know, be the manager of who gets to be a member of the DAO, kind of manage that in, in an autonomous way. So if you have the hat, then you can come to this contract um, and you can go hit the onboard function here. And what that will do is it will recognize, it'll check that you have the right hat. If you do, it will then mint you 100 shares. There is a special case here, um, which is that Sam, don't, don't do that yet because there's a special case that I have um, done here. So I need to, why can't I process this? Am I in the wrong? Proposal is passing. Voting ends in nine minutes. Voting period is like, okay, there we go. All right. I'm going to execute this. This gave you some loot. In the way this works, that loot kind of represents uh, reputation. Loot can be given to people that are not technically members of the DAO. They don't have uh, voting power. But this can be used to track reputation of some kind over time. But as soon as somebody who has loot gets the right hat and they, they onboard into the DAO, their loot will convert to shares as well. So when you guys do this, or I guess in this specific case, Sam, when you click that onboard button, uh, when you call that onboard function, what's going to happen is the, the 20 uh, loot that you now have is going to convert to shares as well. Uh, so I see Deacon, you've already done it. Uh, Sam, um, when you do this, we should see that your voting power goes from 0 to 120, and your non-voting power or your loot will go down to 0. Um, as that's happening, a couple other things I'll, I'll talk about is if you lose the hat, then you can be offboarded from uh, from the DAO, which means your your shares will be co converted, basically downgraded to loot. Maybe you onboard again at some other season or something like that, and it'll be upgraded once again. You can get kicked though if you come into if you fall into bad standing, like you behaved badly. If you're in set, if you're in bad standing on the hat then you can be kicked from the DAO and all your shares and loot will be irrevocably burned. All right, so Badass. that is the HATS onboarding shaman. Let's see, is it working? Are people doing it? Oh, Sam, are you, if you're having trouble, you might actually have to uh, call the reboard function, which will just change your... I'm not sure how that's actually going to work. I can't remember what the logic is. Let me know if you have trouble calling the onboard function, Sam. I love this, and I love those uh, extra things about you know switching loot from from loot to shares, um, being able to kind of manage that reputation, and then kick people if. If they're screwing up, very very cool. Post some more links if you have any more information on this. Is there anything else you wanted to say, Spence? Um, no, I think that's that's mostly it. I'll post the um, the GitHub link here. It's all open source, as you can imagine. Oh, one other thing, I guess. Yeah, uh, just a not really a like a shill, but an invitation. If any of you would like to join, I think some of you are already in, the, in there, but if you, any of you would like to join the uh, the HATS community Telegram channel, um, here is a link to do so. The way, you'll, the way that'll work is you'll, uh, you'll sign our community agreement, which will basically mint you a, a, our community hat, and then you'll be able to, via collab land, get into our Telegram channel. Awesome. Right, it looks man. like Sam had um, to do reboard so it looks like he should have there it is his 20 voting power all right cool thanks guys that's awesome um super cool awesome use case for a shaman uh, and hats um yeah and go check out the the code and some of the other examples of shamans that people are doing um the next 
one is Silo with Jekyll. Um, this is another, this is actually kind of putting a lot of the pieces together, starting to form a, a potential product, but this would be some probably very early demo of that. Go for it, Jekyll, if you're ready. Don't. All right. Uh, Jekyll, can yep, you hear me? Can you hear me? Hold on. Share my screen. Okay, um, so yeah, we are building 6551 DAO tooling um, using the DAO House SDK. Uh, so what I'm demoing today is uh, it's called Silo RDF, which is retroactive DAO formation. Um, what this essentially does is it allows you to airdrop a DAO on any existing uh, 721 NFT collection. Uh, so what we did at first was create a very simple summoner um, to basically set up an airdrop for the NFT collections. Um, so like what you would do in this field is you would just put the DAO name. Um, you would put an amount of meme tokens. So it also airdrops meme tokens, which are loot. And, it, and then it uh, gives one share per NFT. So it's one NFT, one vote, and then you can set up any amount of meme tokens and uh, you can set up, you know, a symbol like meme or whatever. Um, oh, sorry, that's the meme token name. Um, and then so the total supply, you would just put, you know, any total supply and then you would uh, decide on how much of the total supply that you would like to have claimed by the NFT collection. So you could say like 50%. Uh, and then you would say in the max claims, uh, you would generally put like the total supply of the of the NFT collection. So say it was like a collection of 10,000, then it would show, you know, how many uh, meme tokens or loot would be airdropped to each uh, NFT. Uh, and then you would just put the NFT contract address in um, so I'm not going to go through all this, but we uh, have like a demo on uh, testnet on go early and um, we have rise of the fluters. Uh, so we already have it set up. Um, so you just put the NFT contract right in there and then you would summon it. Uh, then you basically would have uh, this claim here where then you have a, a claim window that pops up. Uh, so that way you can manage your different uh, claimed NFTs and NFTs that are still available to claim. So we can um, actually claim one. Give me one second. And so if you were to go to your connected to the DAO, um, you would go to like your profile. It, it would show um, your currently claimed ones and then the ones that haven't been claimed. So then you would be in the claim app and you would just simply go to claim and claim it here. All right. And now it is processing. Still pending, uh, but then you would come to the profile and uh, it will pop up as claimed. And there we go. Um, so now this is the newly claimed NFT. Um, so what you would do here is you deploy the TBA. Um, so once you uh, want to deploy the TBA, we, you, we're using the token bound SDK and the token bound site. Um, so then you would just open up in the token bound site and it will show your nft here uh, and then you can look in assets and here's one uh, of the voting shares and then here's your uh your meme tokens your loot um so then all you would do is deploy the account and this deploys the tba which which essentially just activates it and 
deploy. And all right, now that's processing. Um, then you would be able to come back here uh, and now your, uh, your TBA is deployed and you can connect your avatar. So these are essentially, these could act as your identity um, within the DAO. So you can connect your avatar um, to interact with the DAO directly. So you would come back to um, your TBA here, should refresh and it should be deployed. So now you have to connect with NFT. Um, so you would just follow the steps simply here. Um, this is all gonna be refined, but this is like an MVP. It's available on testnet if anybody's interested in, in playing with it. Um, you can reach out to me and uh, we can set something up. Uh, but then you would just follow the steps. You would disconnect your current address and then a wallet connect pops up. So then you would copy that. You would come to the TBA site. You would connect. And now you are connected and you would come back here. And now you're connected as your TBA. And so like now uh, your TBA, your avatar is connected. So now you're N as your NFT is the actual member of the DAO, uh, then you can interact um, with the DAO by creating proposals, uh, voting, and, and all of that. And then you have like the members list here where it'll show uh, all of the active members. So every shareholder is the, is the TBAs, is the NFTs themselves. Uh, but then you can also delegate. Um, so if you wanted to delegate your power, you can delegate to uh, any address that you would want. So if you could delegate to like your EOA um, or you can delegate all of your, uh, your uh, TBAs to one single avatar and then put all the power to one avatar and connect to the DAO as that and interact um, through that identity. Uh, and that is uh, the basics of this uh, MVP that we have up. Uh, we still have like a lot of work to do, um, but we're working directly with the, the token bound team, uh, Future Primitive. Uh, we have some exciting things in the pipeline uh, for RDF and also for creating custom new collections as well. Um, and then one other thing that we're working on. So we created this simple summoner here for the, the airdrop. And then uh, just to give a little quick sneak peek, um, we're also working on a simple uh, single DAO page um, to uh, have like a very simple interface on a single page um, for anyone familiar with the DAO house interface already. Uh, this is like a pretty big change. Um, so we're looking to simplify it for uh, the, the NFT communities. And basically you have uh, your DAO information, the, the vaults, the members and the proposals all right in one interface. And then you would just have like your, your profile where you can interact with your different NFTs uh, and then like your settings. Um, but yeah, that's what awesome. we're working on. And uh, uh, we're, we're uh, yeah. hoping to have something uh, out to the public soon um, where we have some, some big projects that um, are, are potentially going to be using RDF. So we're um, just getting everything in order and yeah. Yeah. That's that new view, you know, it's that, SPAs are back in fashion, so we're going to see a lot of things. And it's cool using these uh, account abstraction, these 6551s. I think hats, as Spencer's saying, is going to be able to do this kind of stuff soon. Because um, there's also a lot of other things we can start doing, um, you know, like using forwarders to pay for gas and abstracting away some of the wallet interactions, um, but not too much, hopefully. Um, so very cool to see this. And what's neat about this summoner is it's actually summoning shamans. It's summoning a custom loot token, which is a fixed loot token of a fixed supply, um, which isn't like our default, but it's showing some of the flexibility of the, the Moloch contracts, um, that it can use different types of ERC twenties. It can use shamans. It can also be using these 6551s. Having shares set up this way is one other nice thing real quickly is that it, it almost sets up a type of liquid delegation, right? So you can have um, power in a DAO delegated to the owner of uh, NFT, and then you could lock that NFT into a bridge or into a loan protocol or DeFi or something. And 
continue to have power to the owner until it's moved into some another place where someone can change the delegation. So very, very cool. Um, thank you for the demo. Share some links and ways people can learn more. And we will move on. Let's see. Protocol Guild Santiago, are you on? Uh, I don't think Santiago is here, so I see him. Oh, I can. He, a, he just oh. left. He might might be bugged. Oh, give out. me a minute. Need, need to restart Discord. No problem. Um, definitely want to see this one because it's got some cross chain, uh, awesome things. But let's move on, and we'll hop back to him. Um, EC Wireless character sheets. You want to roll? This is another Raid Guild team. Um, Raid Guild obviously always just destroying everything cool in the space and making it awesome, even more awesome. Uh, go for it, bro. Yeah, so this is uh, just to give it, it kind of queued up real quick. So it's called Character Sheets. Actually, let me just link the uh, link the app real quick ahead of time. OK. Um, so just real quick, this is, uh, as Stephen was saying, is being built by Raid Guild. <clears throat> so the team is uh, Mr. Deadcell, uh, Dan Wontree, myself, and Benison. Um, and uh, basically what is being shown now is a in-progress MVP. So it's, it doesn't 100% work at the moment, but it should be uh, totally usable by uh, Raid Guild people on Gnosis uh, chain in like two, uh, three weeks. Uh, so this is, yeah, work in progress, but uh, getting close. Um, it's currently being built for uh, Raid Guild to, to use, and it's, it's supposed to act as kind of like a, an on-chain representation of a Web3 mercenaries experience. Um, through their uh, work in Slang Malik, I guess. Um, so for uh, Raid Guild, this would be basically as you do raids, uh, you accumulate experience uh, um, that build your character over time and, uh, and is able to be easily represented to other people looking at your character. Um, so overall, this extends Raid Guild's current concept of basically just working as an RPG. So... Uh, work as play um, and the specific intention right now is to give more insight into who is raiding in raid guild so this is uh, hopefully it, it'll give uh, a really easy picture of for instance uh, who's active in the guild at the moment who's active within a, a given time frame uh, what's the distribution of xp uh, what kind of skill sets do people have and even uh, the experience levels of each skill set um, under the hood, uh, it's using 6551 as the actual character or the character sheet. Uh, there are classes and items, which are uh, 1155s. And then there's XP, which is an ERC-20. Um, so quickly, uh, I can just skip this for the sake of time. I'm just going to run to the uh, demo here. So to uh, just show the persona of a game master first, as a game master, you would go to the app, you would go to my games, and if this is your first time, this would be empty, and you would go to create a game. You put in the uh, name of the game, description, <clears throat> a little emblem of uh, we want to represent your game. Uh, you can put the game master list here. So this would be, could be the address of the DAO, could be a Gnosis safe, uh, any multi-sig, uh, anyone uh, you want to give basically ad admin privileges. Um, and then finally, you can add uh, a DAO address, which would act as basically the whitelister of who's allowed to create a character. So for Raid Guild, you would put the address of uh, the Raid Guild DAO, and it would ensure only uh, Raid Guilders as being allowed to join this. And uh, we also just updated this so that it's a kind of eligibility adapter, so it can actually be uh, configured so that it could be uh, a whitelist of just NFT holders or basically anything you want. Um, so I'm not going to do this now for the sake of time, but once you create the game, uh, what you would see is a page similar to this. 
uh, of course, without characters initially. Um, and this is where you would start configuring your game. So you would start creating classes, and this would just be the name of the class, the description, um, image for that class. And so once you're done, this is like an example of what Raid Guild's classes would look like after it's all, all configured. Uh, you could also create items. So for now, there's just a sword item. You've got the supply. Um, also shows some stats for that. Um, and then switching over to the uh, player persona or the character persona, um, or I guess player persona, you would go in and you would create your character by adding a name. And then we've also added a visual creation system. <clears throat> so this is a, a kind of early version of this, but uh, these are layers that Benison created. Uh, you can kind of shift, uh, shift between different uh, skin types, different eyes, different hair. Let's go with uh, this here. Different clothing. Uh, and this is just, you start off with just basic villager clothing. That's why this is kind of basic, kind of basic clothing there. I uh, will give him a, a beard. And I'll go ahead and hit create. And this will also, uh, Benison's created like a ton of layers for this. So this will have tons of other uh, layers that you can add to it, even backgrounds. Um, and what it's doing now is it's taking the layers and flattening them into a single image and then turning that into your 6551. And once this goes through, it should take that image and make it as part of your NFT metadata. And there it is there. Perfect. And right now I'm just the villager class. So I'll go ahead and assign myself a warrior class because in Ray Guild that represents a, uh, a front end engineer. So I'll assign myself that. And right now uh, classes are just something that you self assign yourself. Uh, it's kind of like a self description, but pretty soon uh, you'll be able to actually issue experience points and level up these classes so that it's something that um, is accurately representing how much specific uh, skill you have in a particular class and could eventually even have subclasses. Super, cool. super, super cool. And it's a really interesting way to show how uh, the 6551 ex abstraction can kind of start building your NPC in this world, you know, and it's it's very engaging and adds context inside of a group like a, a club like Raid Guild um, uh, and a lot of fun, which is key. So freaking awesome. I love this. Share some info. Um, let's see. Let's move along. Oh, okay, I was going to do a super quick one. Maybe I'll make it super duper quick. Um, if I can. This is something that the Dow House people have seen before because we use it internally, but maybe not others. <clears throat> um, okay, so this is called... Uh, Code, this is one of those nights and weekends things that we just kind of keep hacking on as we go. Um, it's a signaling app, and it's using the DAO House SDK and connected to the DAOs um, using the DAO, uh, DAO Shares and Loot ERC20 tokens. Um, similar to something like a Coordinate or a, um, a Joker race, these are... Uh, um, multiple choice kind of signaling sessions. Um, so we have it set up. We use these for our objectives. This is important because we set seasonal objectives at the beginning of the season, and then we reward the stuff like we're seeing today, the demos that happen throughout the year that help meet us some of our objectives. Um, we have two kind of the straight up points, which re represents kind of a flat um, staking. And then we also have the, the quadratic values. You can kind of see how people have voted, how their quadratic ranking. Um, and this goes into some of our other initiatives internally on, on how we're managing the, the open source protocol and trying to make it really owned by the people like us today that are using it. Uh, any DAO can use this now, although it may be a little buggy, but um, 
if you come in here and do create new, you put in your DAO address and you can uh, start creating new proposals. To have it listed on this page, these are all just like tests, you need to make a PR, but that's that. And uh, it's kind of fun seeing how this just progresses and we iterate on it as we go. Uh, cool. So let's uh, move on to the next thing, which is invoke. Um, this is a uh, something that was built through uh, Arbitrum, and I'll let Travis run with it. Um, it's cool to see these new summoners. I mean, that's this is the power of the, this like shared layer. You know, the Ethereum shared layer of data and computation is we can build lots of summoners. We can build lots of things that do things in different ways the way people want them. It doesn't all have to be, you can focus on UX in one way and you can focus on something else another way. All right, go for it. Cool, so some of the goals that we wanted to accomplish with this was to make an easy to use summoner. Um, V3 app kind of brings all the Molic contract variables into one view. And so it's kind of nice for those who do this shit all the time, but pretty overwhelming if you're new to this stuff. We also wanted to use and improve the DAO house SDK contribute back to the platform, make some improvements. Um, customizing the theme for the UI package was a big goal. Um, selfishly, one of my top priorities, but helping to kind of communicate that one of the coolest things about Web3 technology is that we can use the same contracts and tools to create radically different user interfaces. That was an important concept to demonstrate. And lastly, to inspire, you know, one of the goals with V3 was to do the hard work of building the tools so others can figure out how to create new experiences. Um, so we made a conscious decision with the summoner and the admin apps to make them basic as fuck just to serve as a starting point and not an end goal. So hopefully this kind of can inspire um, others to do the similar thing. So our approach was a little bit different. We did a comparative analysis that was pretty extensive of researching Cali, Aragon, Tally, JokeDAO, and all these others to just get a really good understanding of how everybody else is creating their flows. Um, we did some personas that were very specific to um, working. We were working on an Arbitrum grant from Public House. So we wanted to target the DeFi and gaming communities on that network and then crafted some user journeys based on that information to try to create this user experience that could eliminate most of the inputs that could later be changed through a proposal. Um, so this allowed us to be a little opinionated on what we feel are good starting settings and hopefully just encourage new DAOs to be thoughtful on how they would like to configure their DAOs and get comfortable with making changes through governance process. So what we did, we cloned the DAO house starter. We pulled in the packages from the SDK. Um, we used these DAO house tools to kind of help us figure out a way that they can improve and push some updates to those packages. Um, and then with the form on the summoner kind of being this one size, one, one big form, we basically broke the form up into multiple steps and created a new package called the stepper form wizard um, that got added to the NPM um, for the DAO house. And so we also made, as you can see, like a shit ton of progress with the help of Rowdy um, to customize the theming and make it easier for apps to have a different look and feel um, rather than what we've seen pretty frequently today is that kind of standard V2 blue and yellow. And again, hopefully inspiring the community to kind of take the liberty of improving what we have built with V3. So we're at invoke.house is the domain. Got this crazy cool background popping off. Um, some accordions down here with some lore and link back to the Dow House docs. And then if we hit summon, we're gonna see our stepper form start coming in. Um, Demon days. Um, here we have our token settings. We got the demo, demo and the day token. Uh, let's see if I still have this on my, oh, cool. Just make it easy. Um, this is basically, 
you'll see we pulled in the name of the tokens that we established as these kind of headings. I think that that was a pretty cool little hack. Um, so it's no longer abstract of voting and non-voting, uh, loot and member, blah, blah, blah. Um, if we wanted to add an additional member, we just kind of pop that down. Again, this is kind of be supposed to be quick. It's not supposed to, you know, capture everything that you want to configure with your DAO, but we'll just keep it easy for now. Just me, and then just kind of a review of the settings that you set up. Hit deploy. Come on, Foxy. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, okay, cool. You're getting Arbitrum. a lot of compliments on the UI. Nice, nice. <laughs> so Travis White did a pretty good job. Very metal, they say. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Diablo. <laughs> I don't know why yeah, that didn't go to a conf for some game. Conf conf com uh, confirmation screen, but you guys get the point. Um, so we miss, miss the confetti of the confirmation screen, but basically, you know, your DAO is summoned. You can go to DAO House at that point in time to start making whatever changes that you need to make. Very cool. Um, yeah, and it's a great example of how you can customize these UIs uh, using the DAO House SDK. Um, now that is very doable. It took some time for us to get that working. It's, in V2, you could like change the background and stuff, but we've really made it so that you can do whatever you want now. The um, is that it very was cool. projects like this Thank and you. the Protocol Guild project that that developed like this custom theme functionality and then contributed it back to the protocol. So it's pretty sweet. Like we're starting to work like an open source software platform. Pretty nice. One of the other things too, that yeah. is, like, when we built out the kind of component library and SDK, we thought that people would just use it to like prototype and kind of do their thing and then build out the components they needed. And then the feedback we got was like, people want to use them. So, you know, we, we found out we wanted to use them for other things too. And adding that theming and styling is like reinforces that you got to don't try to guess what your users want, but uh, listen to them. And that, you know, is what helps us with the decentralization and driving that forward. I think we can keep going forward with that. So. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's really cool to see how this open framework can really evolve over time through people building their own independent things and using it and then contributing back. Um, Santiago, you want to give it a try? With the, there's only, uh, so for people that might need to drop, we are almost at the end of the hour, but we're going to go a couple minutes over so we can get this last one in. Okay. Just let me share my screen. Can you see it now? Yes. Cool. Yeah. So I'm just going to present some of the progress that we've been, um, something that we've been uh, working with the Protocol Guild. Um, well, as you, as most of you may already know, the Protocol Guild is a Ethereum collective that aims to fund and sustain the work of, of um, the community members that work on on um, public fund, pu uh, public goods, uh, uh, core infrastructure of the of the Ethereum protocol. Um, the current uh, infrastructure that Protocol Guild um, uses to um, Distribute um, funds uh, to to contributors uh, 
so far is that they use the all splits uh, contracts to receive funds from um, to receive fr funds from uh, a sponsor or the community in general. Those funds are um, deposited, let's say, into a vesting co uh, contract, and at every quarter, uh, these funds are, um, let's say, uh, um, streamed or released on a, on a second split contract that is in charge of um, distributing these uh, released funds to the active contributors during the, the, that quarter. Uh, the split uh, distribution is basically calculated uh, by using a formula on a spreadsheet. Um, that this this process is currently made by some people, some of the ops uh, team in within uh, the protocol guild. All this is made off chain, and the and they they have a basically a multi sig safe that owns the split um, contract that holds the funds. And the, they also use the same um, multi sig to update the splits uh, at every quarter. Uh, what the what we wanted to to do with to, to, with, to with protocol guild for the version the second version of their architecture is to eliminate all these trust layers of their of their current of their current uh, way that they distribute funds and have these member uh, an on chain member uh, registry that basically um, you uh, register all these active contributors you uh, uh, the the, con the this registry contract is also in charge of calculating the um, the weights that will uh, convert into um, the district the, how how much of the funds will be split to to each uh, contributor based on their on the time they have been active or they have been contributing to to the core protocol, and uh, it also this uh, uh, registry contract it will be also in charge of uh, updating the splits distribution uh, on the splits contract. Um, ah, and uh, most of all, uh, we also uh, are creating like a, a opportunity for the Oracle Guild to also uh, receive uh, donations on. Um, L2s or side chains. So um, for that, we um, uh, integrated with uh, the contract with uh, the Connect with Connect to allow the um, the management and distribution of uh, split uh, of yeah of funds that are uh, held in split contracts uh, uh, living on on these other networks, all by uh, interacting uh, through. Um, uh, a main um, network registry that is owned by uh, by the protocol guild DAO, which is uh, uh, spin up or using uh, the new Molo V3. Okay. I was so, wondering, are you sharing the? Okay, I didn't know yeah. if you were locked on one tab, but yeah. So basically, here's the current version of our of the. Front end that we have, you will see here that there is a list of, let's say, the current um, active contributors. Uh, they have an activity multiplier that is basically if they work, they are working uh, full time or part time. Their time active since they joined the the, the, the guild, the start date, and uh, the percentage, the current uh, percentage that will be assigned to them when. Um, Distributed the funds on the split, on the split contract. Um, then we are, there's also this other view where you can see uh, some of the properties of the main registry, which is this is living currently in Gordley. And then we also have uh, some replica registries that um, basically ha, uh, sync, ha, uh, always uh, are in sync with the main registry. Um, and we, we can, you can have as many uh, replicas as uh, Connect supports, uh, have support on different L2s. So we have support for Optimism, Arbitrum, Polygon. There's also Gnosis on Gnosis chain on when we, uh, if, if we go on to production. Um, just let me do a quick update here. 
So I, I just switched to another uh, registry that I deploy for for testing purposes. So for example, uh, this current registry have the main registry and have already has a, a replica on optimism. In case you want to add another uh, replica on, on another H2, for example, Arbitrum, you can just go here to register a new replica. Uh, you um, Create here a new proposal that will go through DAO voting. Um, basically, you need to specify the new replica that you just deployed. For the purpose of this demo, I just I already, I already submit this uh, proposal here, so I'm just going to execute this, and you're going to see that basically it registered the replica on the on the on the on the contract on the main contract. And it also submits a cross-chain uh, message to the replica on Arbitrum that will basically allow the main registry to accept the, the control of the split contract that lives on, on this other L2 con on this other chain. Okay, so yeah, I think it passed. Just let me Check here on activity logs. Uh, this is still a work in progress, but as you can see here, uh, here I am using the the a local indexing module. Uh, big props to Bitbeckers. It is a good uh, design pattern for doing local indexing on, on this kind of, of, of projects. So for example, here we have uh, two events that were um, two messages that were forward through Connects to, to update the, the, the replicas on, on these other tools. So let's say I'm gonna, uh, I think this is one that I just submitted. This is awesome. I hadn't seen that you've, you're using Bitbecker's uh, local indexing solution. Um, I love seeing you know, these kind of collaborations and things just building. So this is yeah, very so cool. Have, and as you're working through these, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so here we have, uh, uh, we'll be integrating this into the project, but for the purpose of this demo, I just wanted to show you that in this transaction, we submitted a cross-chain messaging to connect the main registry with the replica. So we needed to forward a message from Gorli to Arbitrum. Uh, this will take around 20 minutes, um, but then the the uh, once the the transaction is executed on the other chain, then we will have we will be ready to start syncing the registries. For example, here we already have a new replica active for this um, on this on this um, on this instance, but we'll need to wait until this gets executed and we can start syncing the registries across chains. Yeah. Very cool. So, you know, basically what's happening here is we're, we have a DAO on uh, one kind of root chain on mainnet, or in this case, Gurley, and it's maintaining state on all the other chains. So it's flat, it's, kind of flattening this uh, multi-chain world we live in um, and being able to uh, then leverage connects to do the, the cross-chain messaging kind of behind the scenes and OX splits then to do these distributions. Um, super cool, man. Thank you for showing. Anything else you wanted to show here? Uh, no, that's what I want. That's it. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. And Protocol Guild. Thanks for the work they do in the core development of the space. Um, cool. Well, that is our last demo. Um, we're uh, current members are going to be voting and, and distributing our retroactive rewards over the next few days. A lot of these things, uh, these demos, a lot of our the core maintenance, um, the champions works. And um, if you're if you are interested and you're not involved, and you may receive house or 
be uh, into the Dow next season, then uh, you can participate then. You can participate in our objective setting, which will happen next week or so, if you want, and that would be by joining Public House. So thank you everyone so much for joining. Does anyone have any comments or anything they wanna, wanna say right here at the end? Uh, not until after we stop recording. Uh, well, we can we can play the uh, the boofer uh, thing and play us out. <laughs> I think it should be on the recording because it's amazing. I think we have to talk about it. But yeah, incredible, everyone! Um, it's so cool to see just everyone continuing, even in in the stormy weather we may have right now, continuing to ship and build and experiment and and try new things because we we don't have everything figured out and we still have a lot of work to do um and we've I, got I fucking great last tools one. we've got great tools and a meaningful yeah. technology that we can share with the world and really solid people around it and so this is the time that we start putting these things to work and building this dope shit so it's really inspiring and i appreciate you all yeah, point. I got to second that. Like the people in this Discord group right now, like I, I look up to and respect and <clears throat> am inspired by so many of the people that are in, in this uh, chat right now. You guys are pretty amazing. Yeah. And just a second Me that, too. like we have, you know, our, our protocol is like tons of contracts, 17 NPM packages, a couple of apps, and, and nobody's getting paid to maintain it, right? Like, like a bunch of people, Deacon, Santiago, Rowdy, Brian Rossetti, Dan, One Tree, Earth to Travis, all have been like just doing it, just maintaining this thing. And it's starting to really work as an open source software platform. And it's super inspiring. And seeing all these projects build, using it in some manner, and then contribute back to it is just like, that's what we were, hope, we're hoping would happen. And it's really sweet to see that it's starting to happen. So thank you, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, these are the days, you know, sometimes I'm just like, oh, my God, how are we going to do this? But these are the days where it's like, fuck, yeah, it's all fucking worth it. Um, so uh, th thanks for saying that, Sam. And, and you were on the list to talk about some of the actual maintenance and new features of the protocol. Um, yeah. Just to quickly say, like, uh, if you haven't checked it out for a while, check it out because it's coming a long way and it takes all of us to build something like this, build it in the open and really add to the space. Um, you mentioned Dan One Tree. He, uh, he just did a, an, an awesome addition by helping the, how we decode these really complex transactions that can happen sometimes sometimes we're making transactions that are going through multiple safes and going through DAOs and um, can they can get very complicated and hard to decode but came from out of the blue regular member added an addition and now everyone can benefit from that so um yeah, so thank you guys for coming. Let's play us out with some boofer. And just a quick reminder, I already mentioned it, but for people that are in public house, voting is going on now. We need to start filling in some choices and start voting. And Monday, I think, is the last day. So um, hopefully we can get some of these projects and their, their creators some influence here and so they can participate. Um... Awesome. Love the little love fest we had there at the end.